Dear friends, you're listening to the second section of my message of today. We've just read from the book of Ezekiel chapter number 37 and verses number 1 up to 14. My topic is God of my grave. Hallelujah. Let me just pray in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you because of the listeners of today and the viewers who are going to view this video. I pray that let it have an impact in their life in Jesus' name. Amen. Many people have ever lived in the grave like Lazarus lived in the grave for all the days that he was there. The Bible says that he was rotten and he was dead and rotten and he was tenching according to the sisters. But Jesus did not look at the stench that was coming from that grave. My friend, which grave have you been living in? When you look at your past, my brother and my sister, you see a dark past. You don't see anything good that you can attribute to yourself. When you look at your today, your current life, there is nothing that you can boast of. You look at a life that is completely weird, a life that is not making you proud at all. Your children, your marriage, your everything, your job, your business, it's not making you happy. But I want to remind you that God is never limited by your circumstances. That place you're living in where you're so much pressed and things are completely depressing you. It is not a difficult place where the hands of God cannot reach. God is speaking to Ezekiel. He's telling Ezekiel, speak to the bones and tell these dry bones that can you live? And God had known that these dry bones can be converted into something of life. It can be converted into a multitude of army, a greater army. And Ezekiel is beginning to prophesy to the bones. And he is speaking to the bones. The Bible says that they were really dry. And when God had told Ezekiel that now prophesy, let them know that I am God. The Bible says that as he continued to prophesy, there was a rattling of sound. There was a lot of noise from all directions. The bones were coming together. The bone of the head that had gone far away was coming to connect to the bone of the neck and to the bone of the body and to the bone of the arm and to the bone of the, of the limbs. And they became a people. They became one team, a big army of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. What is so dry in your life? The Bible says that even though they were born, they were living. They were people. But they were dead because there was no breath in it. But God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the winds of the four corners. So that the wind could come and breathe into those dead people. And when Ezekiel did that, life came into those bones. Let me tell you one thing. Maybe at some point, you have been seeing yourself in a situation that God is just about to help you. God is about to solve your problem. But on the other hand, you're still seeing some other areas that are not working well for you. Let me tell you, God is not through with you until he says so. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. There is no limitation with God. You might look like you are about to make it, but a lot of obstacles are coming. Just like those bones, they were already connected, but then they did not have life in them. And God can command life to start working in you. What is so dead in your situation, my brother and my sister? What is so dead in your church? What is so dead with your people? What is so dead in your marriage? There is nothing that God cannot bring back to life. How much I pray thee today that God may speak into your heart and let God remind all of us that it is God who can bring life into death. He can convert that grave upside down. Remember when we were reading when Jesus Christ was being resurrected. The people who crucified Jesus knew that he was not going to live again. But let me tell you one thing. The heavenlies knew that Jesus was not dead. Just as Jesus had spoken about Lazarus, that he is not dead, but he is asleep. So Jesus also was predicting, he was foreshowing what was going to be into his death. Lazarus' death was not a normal death. It was a death that was a foreshadow. It was foretelling of how Jesus was going to be. Jesus was only going to be in the grave for three days. My brother and my sister, before your third day is over, never lose hope, my sister. Never lose hope, my brother. Your third day is coming. The Holy Spirit of God is going to be commanded to come into that grave where you live. That little grave is not going to 
hold back your blessing. It is not going to hold back the destiny that the Lord has for you. Your faith is going to pull you out of that grave. And you're going to have another life again. You're going to have another good husband again. You're going to have another good wife again. You're going to have another job again. Your business is going to come back into your hand in the name of Jesus. There is no limitation with our God. What has been oppressing you? What have you been weeping about? When you go before the Lord, you feel so desperate. Let me tell you, you are a child of God. You are a daughter of God and you are a son of God. You are not desperate. You are not a failure. Even though the community might look at you like a failing person. Even though your church might look at you like you're not worthy. Sometimes when you go to visit your friends, they look at you like you're not even supposed to visit them. Let me remind you, child of God, that God has got a reason for all that. He is going to use every obstacle as a stepping stool into your destiny. Before God lifts you up, up to the place where I wanted you to be, you must pass through some challenges. Let me tell you when the children of Israel had left Egypt, they did not leave Egypt that they could just go to Canaan in an easy way. It was several years, 40 years of struggle and turmoil. Each time that they lacked something, they complained. Let me tell you one thing. It did not just be, it was not served on a silver platter, but each time that Moses went before the Lord to ask God what he could do when things were very tough, God was giving Moses a task to take. God has given you a task, my brother and my sister. Remember when I was sharing with you a few uh, weeks ago, I told you, you've got a staff in your hand. God has got a staff in your hand for you. God will always give you a task. He is not giving you a task to do because he hates you. If God has directed you to be an usher, be an usher because that is the task that is going to lift you to your destiny. If God has called you to be washing the child, wash it because that is going to be a stepping stool into your destiny. Do whatever you can with whatever God is putting in your hand. That task is not meant to kill you. The challenge is not meant to finish you, but it is meant to lift you to another level. May the Lord of heaven bless you as you are listening and viewing this message of today. The God of my grave. May God of heaven bless you and lift you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom. 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 In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah.